What's up, Central? Thank you so much for taking time to connect with us online today. I want to give a big shout out to our Creston campus. We were down there this week setting up new computer stuff and working with sound. We're super excited to see that you guys are getting involved in, in more on-site worship. And man, we are just pumped about all of the amazing things that God is doing uh, down in Creston right now. I want to say hello uh, to all of my friends at St. Greg's. It's good to be preaching with you guys today. Um, if you had a Bible... Acts 28 is eventually where we'll land. Uh, we are in week number two of a series called Recalculating. And this series is all about what to do when plans change. Uh, last week, we talked about how God loves you, is always with you, and he has greater plans for you. And I told you, that's something that I say all the time. It's something that I like to, to say to myself all the time, something I really need to remind myself of a lot. But we said that's hard to embrace when things don't go the way that you want them to go, right? When my plans and God's plans don't line up and I actually have to step into God's plan instead of Ryan's plan, that's difficult. And I told you, one of the things that we have to remember is that when our plans change, when, when plans aren't going the way we want them to go, we have to remember that God is still God and God is still good. <laughs> now, after the third service last Sunday, I was supposed to go to Des Moines and watch my daughter Chloe play softball. But since God had a sense of humor, and since I'm preaching about change plans, plans changed. A storm rolled through Des Moines and completely wiped out, canceled the entire tournament. Um, to say I was disappointed was an understatement. There, there aren't many local tournaments this fall um, that I get to see her play in, and so, so I, don't, I don't get to see her play very often because she's not, she's not local. She's doing a lot of stuff out of state the next several weekends, and so and, and so I was bummed. And, and so this week, um, I spent some time thinking about storms. Now, to, to set this up, let me, let me just talk about storms for a second. This is just me. Um, this is my preference. I, I love a good storm in the distance. H how, how about you? L like if I'm at the beach, you, you know what I'm talking about? You, you ever seen a storm at sea? Have you ever seen a storm at the beach? You, you ever been at the beach like, like it's far out in the water and you can see the lightning and, and you can feel just like a little bit of gust of wind or whatever? Like that's cool. Like I, I like to see it in a distance. In the summertime, like summer storms are awesome, yes or no? Y yeah, when? <laughs> when they're in the distance. You, you know what I'm saying? Like you can see the lightning at night and it's just like way far away or just... You're just sitting by the fire pit or chilling in the hot tub or whatever. You're just kind of enjoying it. And again, you just kind of feel that breeze coming in or whatever. Like, I, I love storms like that. I love to see storms in the distance. I, I even love to be in a storm when the storm is what I would call small. L like when you're going to bed at night and, and you lay down and you just kind of hear the rain just like, just like smacking against the window. You, you, know, you know what I'm talking about? Th that's awesome. I, I enjoy small storms, but I don't really like heavy storms. I, I don't know if you do or not, but I don't, I don't enjoy them. I don't enjoy tornado warnings. I don't like it when the sirens are going off. I don't like it when the house is shaking. And I am not a huge lightning fan when it's close. Are, are you? <laughs> Last summer, um, there was a storm, and we had the fireworks tent outside here at church. And we were in the, the fireworks tent because, man, it was storming all around. It was crazy. The amount of rain that was coming down and the wind, it was just absolutely nuts. And we're in there, like, freaking out. Well, well, it stopped raining, and the lightning stopped. There was, like, some thunder in the distance and stuff. And so we ran out of the tent, and we went out onto the parking lot to light off some fireworks. And we lit some off, and they were, like, really cool. And we were walking back to the tent. And I kid you not, this is a true story. Like 25, 30 yards away from the tent, um, there's like a field just out, outside here, out, outside of this parking lot in the church here, and lightning hit the ground. 25, 30 yards away from the fireworks tent. It was like this huge flash. It took the breath out of me. I looked over at Chloe and her hair, the true story, her hair is sticking out like this. The hair on my arms is standing up. Everybody inside of the tent is like freaking out. It was crazy, crazy. So, so I'm not a huge, not a huge fan of storms. You're like, where are you going with this? What's this have to do with the Bible? Here's where I'm going. I don't love being in the storm. I actually love making it through the storm, right? I, I love making it through the storm, but, but I don't actually enjoy the process of being in the storm. Now, every once in a while, I'll meet somebody, and they'll say, I just love it when I go through a spiritual storm. <laughs> well, you know what? 
you ain't never gone through one. Because if you've ever gone through a real storm in life, hello? It, it, like, if you've ever been through it, like, you wouldn't have loved it. Because if you've ever really been through it, number one, you wouldn't wish that on anybody. And number two, you really didn't enjoy it. Now, now listen, don't miss this, don't miss this. You might have enjoyed the results from it, right? Like, you, you might have, resu- stay with me, like, you might have enjoyed the results, but you didn't enjoy it while you were going through it. And so today, we're going to talk, we're going to look at some things that can happen to us when we go through storms. Because here's the thing, I, I believe everybody watching is going to be able to identify with this message. Because you've either gone through a storm, you're in a storm, or you're getting ready for a storm. And, and I don't say that to be mean, and I don't say that to be grim, that's just reality. You're either in a storm, you've been through one, or there's one coming, baby. And so in order to set this up, and we're going to look at this storm that happens in Acts chapter 27, um, I'm going to try to summarize it real quick. Um, in Acts, there's a guy named Paul. The very first time we meet Paul, he is not a Christian. And so if you're watching right now and you're not a Christian, you have something in common with somebody in the Bible because the first time that we meet Paul, he's not a Christian either. In fact, he was hostile to Christians. He killed Christians. Like he was running around killing them. Like, like, like people ran up to him like, hey, Paul, what do you do for a living? I kill Christians. Kill them. Like, what? I kill Christians. You want some? Like, like, sir, that was him. He was so hostile, like he started traveling around destroying churches. But then, as he always does, Jesus changed his plans. Jesus showed up and rocked his world. Paul met Jesus. Jesus completely changed him. And Paul went from killing Christians to actually going out and telling people, hey, You should be a Christian. Like this Jesus dude, he's got it going on. You need to follow him. Like you need to get all in with Jesus. And he went from destroying churches to actually going out and building churches. It was crazy. But then he started to get some opposition. And strangely enough, the opposition that Paul got was the same (laughs) opposition that Jesus got. It was from religious people, the same people that killed Jesus. Like they kept trying to kill Paul. They killed Jesus, and now they're trying to kill Paul. He would go into a town, and he would get stoned, he, it, like with rocks. Like, I got to say that, right? He, people would throw rocks at him. He would go into a town. He would get beat up. He would go to another town. He would get put in jail. Everywhere it went, it seemed like people were trying to kill him. But don't miss this. They couldn't kill him because God had told Paul, hey, you're going to go to Rome. You're going to preach the gospel. This is huge. You're going to preach the gospel in Rome. And so Paul said, hey, I'm going to keep going because God has a call in my life. And because God has a call in my life, these people aren't going to be able to shut me down because God loves me, is always with me, and God has greater plans for me. But again, everywhere he went, no matter how often he said that, it seemed like his plans started to change. And and people kept trying to kill. And ultimately, ultimately he gets arrested. Right? Ultimately, he gets arrested, he gets put on this boat, and he gets to set sail for the place God told him he would ultimately go, which is Rome. So he's going to go to Rome, and he's going to stand trial before the emperor. And so he gets put on this boat, and he's sailing along, and they, they're going to several different places. And they get to this place called Crete, and Paul said, hey, I, I think this is where we probably ought to stay for the winter. Like, I know I'm your prisoner, and I, I, I know, like, but, but man, I, I feel like some stuff is coming, man, and so... We probably ought to stay right here. Now, at this point, all of the experts, all the boat people were like, Paul, come on, man. Listen, you're a great preacher. Like, Paul, you're a really good writer. But, Paul, dude, you don't know anything about being on a boat. Like, we're professional boaters, and we know what should be done. We know what needs to happen. And so we're going to take off. And so they get back on the boat, and they head out to sea. Now, the Bible says in Acts 27 that a storm hit, and this storm is severe. Now, we don't know exactly how long the storm was. We know from verse 27 that it was at least 14 days. Now me, I don't like being in a storm for 14 minutes, but can you imagine being on a boat 2,000 years ago in the middle of a 14-day storm? There's some people in here like, I just, I love being on a boat. This isn't a cruise ship. Right? This isn't a Disney cruise. Mickey isn't running around calming all your little kids down, right? This was a boat 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago. A boat in the middle of an extreme storm. And eventually, they have a shipwreck. Now, I skipped a ton of details that are in Acts 27. 
You can go back and you can read that if you want. Um, but there are four things that I want to point out that happen as a result of the storm. These are things that happen to Paul in this story, and I, w- I believe that they happen to us as well. Four things. If you're taking notes, you can write this down. Number one, storms carry us to new places. Storm, they do. Storms carry us to new places. Now, we're going to do a survey. I need everybody online to participate. All right, whether you're at home, whether you're sitting in Creston, whether you're at St. Greg's, you can type this, you can just shout it out loud, whatever. All right, everybody's got to participate. There are two types of people watching right now there are planners and there are go with the flowers. The planners, you're organized, man. You're detailed. You dot all the I's and you crowd all, across all the T's. Like everything has to be planned out for you perfect. Go with the flowers? <laughs> you're like, why can't we just have fun? Like, why can't we just do our own thing, man? Why does everything have to be planned out all the time? Can't we just enjoy life? So I'm just curious, how many, how many planners are watching? How many planners? Just type me or just shout out me, whatever. How many, how many go with the flowers? How, how many of you just, that, that's just you, man. Like, I just enjoy, like, why can't we just enjoy life? Me? Um, I'm probably like 80-20. All right, I'm 80% go with the flow. But there's a small part of me that has to make some plans. And let me tell you about the planner part of me. The planner part of me is OCD. Like, if you're a planner, you'll understand. Like, the the planner part of me is jacked up. Like, if I plan A, B, and C, then A, B, and C has to happen. It can't be A, C, and B. It's got to be A, B, C, right? Right? And, and, and if I tell you I'm going to be somewhere at 4 o'clock, I'm there at 345. If you're there at 355, you're late. Like, that's the way I operate sometimes. Like, I'm just jacked up. And so planning and go with the flowing, I'm a little bit in both worlds. But one of the things that I've discovered is that storms have a way of really messing up our plans and carrying us to new places. I, I'm going to be honest with you, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you this. I, I'm not where I thought I would be in life. Now, I don't say that in a bad way because I I love where I am, and I I love doing what I do. I'm just saying that that this probably isn't the path that I would have picked for me. And, And I would imagine that there's a lot of people watching that you could say the exact same thing because storms, let's don't miss this, storms really do carry us to new places. Listen, if you ever want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Seriously. If you ever want God to laugh, because a lot of times we'll tell God our plans, and God's like, (laughs) you know what, dog? (laughs) I got a different place for you to go. You're going to love it. And and, and many times, listen, 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 listen. Don't miss this. Many times he gets us there. He gets us to these new places through a storm. Watch this. Acts 28, verse 1. Once safely on shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. Hold, Hold up for a second. I don't know if you've ever been lost before, like you had to figure out where you are. In in today's world, like it's hard to get lost because all you got to do is pull out your phone, Google Maps, bam, like there you are, like that's it. They didn't have that. These guys are so far off course. They didn't even know what the island was called. Professional sailors, like these guys, man, they, they sailed all the time. They're so far off course, they didn't even know the name of the island. Hey, where are we at? Uh, excuse me. Yeah? Hey, hey, can you tell us where we are? Yeah, this is Malta. This is what? We're on Malta. What do you mean? Ma- what the heck is Malta? Like, they were so far off course, they didn't even know this place existed. Listen, they were supposed to go from point A to point B. This is not a place that they would have went to on their own. And, and, and storms, again, storms take us sometimes to brand new places, places we never, ever, ever would have gone. Well, here's the good news about the end of the story. I'll tell you this because we're not going to cover it today. There was a sick dude in Malta. He was actually the chief of the island. Um, Paul winds up healing him from his sickness, and then Luke tells us later on that he heals all of the people on the island, which is a good thing, right? It's an awesome thing. And looking at that, you can say, oh, that was God's plan. He's going to heal the chief and heal all the people, and everything's going to be great. But at the end of the day, don't miss this, he wouldn't have been there had the storm Not taking him there. Storms sometimes carry us to new places, places we wouldn't have picked 
for ourselves. Now listen, I'll be honest with you. Storms are freaking scary, aren't they? L- listen, listen. I struggled with this all week. I struggled about whether or not I was going to say this all week. I've listened to all the music. I've heard all the songs. I know all the sayings. I still haven't figured out how to praise him in the storm. You, you know what I'm saying? D- do, do you know that? Like, like I haven't figured it out. Like, I, I just don't know. Because listen, when I go through a storm, I'm not praising him. I'm peeing my pants. Like, that's, that's honestly usually what I'm doing. Now, now listen, don't, don't miss this. I, I can praise him on the other side of the storm, right? I can praise him on the other side of the storm. But in the middle of the storm, sometimes I tend to freak out. I guess maybe when it comes down to it, I guess I'm just not as godly as the singers who sing about praising him in the storm. Oh, and, and by the way, just a side note of this, I couldn't find one example in the Bible where people are in the middle of the storm and they were praising him. They, they were seeking him, they were praying to him, and, and they, were, they were begging him, and they were talking to him, but not praising. Listen to me. If you're in the middle of the storm, if you're in the middle of it right now and you're freaking out, it's not, it's not, it's not because you don't have enough faith, and it's not because you're not a good Christian. It's because you're a human being, because at the end of the day, I can promise you that storms are going to take you places that you never thought you would go. For me, my storms have taken me to places I didn't ever think I would ever go. Like, like I've had people ask me this, and, and I'm going to go ahead and answer this for me and for everybody watching right now. I've had people say, well, aren't you glad you went through what you went through? What? Aren't you glad? Like, like aren't, you, aren't you glad you went through what you went through? No. Heck no. What? You're not glad? No, I'm not glad I went through it. Now, now I'm happy. I'm happy about what I can do now. But saying, aren't you happy? Aren't you happy, brother, about what you went through? No! I'm not happy about it. I didn't enjoy it. But you know what? Because I've been through some storms, Right? Because I've been through some storms, I can now relate to people that have been in the same type of storms, and I can have a conversation with them and help them understand what I've learned. See, I can see the results. I can see the benefits of it. But I'm not necessarily glad I went through it. I'm not glad I went through a rough marriage this season. I'm not glad I suffered with anxiety. I'm not glad I've suffered with addiction issues. I'm not glad those things happen. But don't miss this. All of those things, they wound up taking me to a place where I can now relate to people that have gone through those issues and say, you know what? You know what? I know what you're going through. I've been there. And trust me, because I know God still loves you. God still loves you. He's always with you, and he's got greater plans for you. Listen. The storm does not mean that God does not love you. The storm is evidence that God is with you and he will get you through whatever you're going through because he will never leave us, he will never forsake us, and he will always be with us. That's, that's what happens in storms. The second thing a storm does is storms often restructure our relationships. They do. Storms often restructure our relationships. If you ever want to see who your real friends are, go through a storm. How how many of you know what I'm talking about? You ever want to see who your real friends are, go through a storm. See, when you're in a storm, you don't forget the people who step up during a storm, right? Let let me show you this. They land on this island called Malta. They have to find out where they are. There there wasn't a sign that says, welcome to Malta. I mean, they they had to talk to somebody. And Luke tells us this in, in verse two. The islanders showed us, now underline this next phrase. The islanders showed us unusual kindness that that phrase is huge unusual kindness now i I don't know what they were expecting i don't know if they expected to be attacked or if they expected cannibals to come out and cook them or whatever like i don't know what they were expecting but luke said unusual kind that's huge unusual kindness they built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold unusual kindness unusual unusual kindness i cannot get this phrase out of my head unusual kindness isn't it an incredible thing about this isn't it incredible when you're going through a storm isn't it awesome when you can find somebody in the middle of a storm who will show you unusual kindness because see what, what i've discovered i've discovered that storms when it comes to relationships 
Storms do a couple things. First thing they do, letter A, is they clear people out. They do. They clear people. Many of you watching, you've gone through a storm and thought you had a friendship, and after the storm, you looked around and nobody was with you. It cleared some people out, right? The storm cleared some people out. And, and, and let me just say this, and I'm going to say this because I have to remind myself of this all the time. If somebody has been cleared out of your life, if somebody walked away from you in the middle of the storm, you got to let go of anger. You got to let go of bitterness. You got to let go of unforgiveness. You got to let go of that person. They were in your life for a reason, for a season, and now they're gone. And for whatever reason, they're gone. Listen, us being angry and bitter and unforgiving only hurts us. You got to let them go. The storm, the storm, not you, the storm cleared them out. And, and listen, 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 listen. I get it. I do. I get it. You thought they would be with you and stand by your side forever, and, and, and now they're not there anymore, and you're sad, and you're heartbroken, or you're mad, and you're bitter, and you're angry, you're unforgiving. Like, I, 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 I get it. But you've got to let them go. Now, I've had people say, well, you haven't truly forgiven someone until you've reconnected the relationship. You ever heard that? You never... Tr- you ain't never really forgiven somebody until you've reconnected the relationship. That, that ain't true. That, that, that's just not true. Like, for example, I had a friendship with a guy one time. We were tight, tight, man. We were close, close, close friends. We did a lot of ministry things together. I mean, we did some incredible ministry things together. But then he did some stuff. I did some stuff. And I'm not going to go into details, but it just, it just wasn't right. And it blew up bad. It was nasty. But you know what? I've forgiven him. To- totally forgiven him. Took some time, but totally forgiven. Here's the thing, though. If he called me today and said, hey, Ryan, you want to go to lunch? I wouldn't go. I wouldn't. Now, listen, listen. I don't hate him. I just don't want to have lunch with him. That doesn't mean that I haven't forgiven him, right? Right? That, that doesn't mean I haven't forgiven him. Like, like, Think about it like this. Let's say I called you and I said, hey, can we have lunch together tomorrow? And, and you said, yeah, absolutely. Where are we going? Board Narrows, right? That's, that's where we're going. And so let's say we're, we're going to go to lunch together. We walk in, Board Narrows, and, 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 and we're sitting down, and, and you sit down, and I haven't quite sat down yet, but I just reach out, and I just slap you in the face as hard as I can. And as soon as I did, I'm like, listen, 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 listen. Oh, man, I, I don't know why I did that. I am so sorry. Will you forgive me? You'd probably be like, yeah, I, I mean, I guess, uh, sure, all right, let's, let's just eat, all right? So, so you forgive me, all right? So I slapped you, you forgive me. Let's say, let's play pretend, let's pretend that later that night I called you up and I said, listen, 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 I, I know I slapped you today, but let me make that up to you. Let's have lunch tomorrow because, man, I feel, I feel so, so, so bad about what happened today. You, you might say, okay, I'm, I'll meet you for lunch tomorrow. We, we ain't going there. Let's, let's go somewhere else, man, because you get kind of crazy at Bordenero. So, so maybe we just go somewhere else, right? <laughs> right? So let's say the next day we show up for lunch together, and we're walking in, and we're getting ready to sit down, and I take my hand again, and again, as hard as I can, I just slap you across the face, and I go, ugh, I just, man, I just, I just can't stop. I don't, I don't know why I do it. Will, will you just forgive me? No, no let's just say, <laughs> let's say, hypothetically, you say, mm, I guess, <laughs> yeah, we'll let this one go too, right? And so, so once again, once again, you forgive me. So let's say, we keep playing pretend, right? Let's say that night I called you and said, listen, 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 listen. I was wondering if it'd be okay if we went to lunch together tomorrow. You would say, you know what, dude? I got plans. I think I have a car accident plan for tomorrow, right? Now, now, now listen, you might not hate me, but you don't want to hang out with me. It's just, l- listen, it, it's the same thing. Sometimes, sometimes God uses the storm to clear some people out. The beautiful thing, though, is that what we see in this text, letter B, is that God uses the storm to bring people in. God uses the storm to bring people in. The people that step into your life, don't miss this. The people who step into your life in the middle of the storm, those are the people that you can count on for the rest of your life. I, I have discovered firsthand that God has brought some people into my life during the storm, and man, those are the people. Listen, 
The people who see you in the storm, the people who get to see you at your worst and still want to hang out with you, man, that's who you can depend on, amen? And, and, And while it's heartbreaking, While it's miserable at times to see who God has cleared out, we need to focus on who God has brought in and celebrate that. Which leads to the third thing, and this is where it really gets intense. Storms. Storms often expose our insecurities. Storms often expose our insecurities. Once again, survey time. Everybody got to participate. I want to talk about pets because I'm just curious. All right, How many people have a dog? How many people? How many of you are dog people? Just yell me, type yes, type me, whatever. Dogs are awesome. I got three dogs. Dogs are incredible. I told you this a couple weeks ago. Like, I love dogs. Love my dog. Love, love, love all of my dogs. How many of you have a cat? I'm I'm not going to make fun of you. I'm just curious. How how many cat people? Any, Any cat people watching right now? Cat people? All right. Don't raise your hand on this next one. Don't type. Don't say anything next to the people next because they probably don't want to know this next one, all right? I don't want to know. But there are some people on this planet who have pet snakes. Pet snakes. Now, I, I don't understand that because, see, like, like, that is a pet that will eat you. you. You can't cuddle with Susie the snake, right? Hey, look at Susie. <laughs> and you wake up and you're in Susie's belly because Susie just ate your butt. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I don't understand why anybody would have a snake. Snakes freak me out. In fact, we've got some snakes around here right now. M- Melissa took a picture of this one morning. And, and I was like, well, time to find another church to work at. And then like two days later, God reminded me I'm not done here because I came in and this is what I found. Isn't that awesome? I put that on social media, and people said, the only good snake is a, what did you just say out loud right there? What did you just type in? A dead snake, right? The only good snake is a dead snake. I, I, don't, I don't like snakes. I agree. The only good one is a dead one. I don't like snakes. I don't like stories about snakes. I don't like pictures of snakes. I don't like snake movies. I don't like snakes on a plane. I don't like snakes. With all of that, because you're wondering, where, where are you going with this? Um, I was thinking, I was thinking about how most of us sane people who love Jesus and are going to heaven one day, we don't like snakes. I was thinking about that. And watch this. Paul, now, now, now think about it. Paul has been everywhere. Everywhere, pe- everywhere Paul goes, people are trying to kill him. He's getting put in jail. He's getting beat up. He's getting rocks thrown at him. He finally gets on a boat. The boat, the boat's sailing. He goes to a couple different places. Some places are good. He tells these people, hey, we need to stay here. They're like, no, we're not going to stay there. They get back on the boat. The storm comes. The boat crashes. He lands in Malta. People are being nice. They build a fire. All Paul wants to do at this point is sit down by the fire and just chill. So, some of you know what it is like, especially moms, right? All I want is five minutes. Can you not just give me five minutes? Can I not just get five? Like, that's what Paul wanted, man. Just, just give me five minutes. That's, that's it. And so look at this. He's trying to help with the fire because he wants to get his five minutes. And the Bible says this in verse 3. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood, and as he put it on the fire, a viper, now that's deadly, right? A viper driven out by the heat fastened itself on his hand. Now Luke, who wrote this as a doctor, he could just said bit, like the, the viper bit him. But he said fastened. And because I'm a visual person, I can see Paul holding his hand up like this, and the snake is just like hanging off, fastened on his hand. Not bit, fastened on his hand. Hey, Paul, what's up? (laughs) Nothing. Snake. (laughs) Like, I just, that's just me. And so the snake, and and, and by the way, if I'm Paul, this this is my, that's it moment. This is my, I've had enough moment with God. Seriously. Beatings shipwreck torture all you're trying to do is sit down by the fire and a snake fastens itself to your hand i mean come on but paul didn't do that watch this when the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand they said to each other this man must be a murderer for though he escaped from the sea the goddess justice has not allowed him to live they didn't try to help don't miss this they didn't try to help him they just sat back and talked about him don't miss this don't miss this don't miss this because this is huge I was thinking about this. I was thinking about the snake thing, and I couldn't get past this. The snake bit Paul. Snake bit Paul. The snake bit Paul. Where's the first place in the Bible that we see a snake? You go all the way back to Genesis chapter 3 when Satan tempted Eve. He took the form of a what? 
of a snake, right? You, you got this snake that kind of that works its way through Scripture, and here you see Paul being attacked by a snake. And as the viper is hanging from his hand, people around him start to accuse him. And they accuse him, don't miss this, they accused him based on who he was. They say, hey, this man must be a murderer. Now remember, he was a murderer at one point, but now... Now he's proclaiming the gospel. Now he's telling people about Jesus. Here we see Paul coming face to face with accusation. Every single one of us watching knows what it feels like to feel the weight of accusation from the enemy. You you, you know what's dangerous about accusation? You know what's dangerous about accusation? There's some truth to it. Because see here, Paul was a murderer, but now he's not a murderer. Accusation. Let, let's, let's talk about this. For example, let's say, let's say you leave today. Let's say you turn this off today and you say, I'm, I'm never watching Central again. I am never, ever, ever going to watch that again. Why not? Because Pastor Ryan's an Iowa fan. He loves the Hawkeyes. He talks about the Hawkeyes all the time. He wears his stupid Hawkeye clothes all the time. He cheers for the Hawkeyes during football season. I think it's ridiculous how much he cheers for the Hawkeyes. And so I ain't never watching again, and I'm never going to step foot in that church because he loves the Hawkeyes. Well, everybody who knows me is going to laugh, and I'm going to laugh because that would be an accusation that is simply not true. Most of you know If you know me, I don't care if Iowa ever wins another football game in the history of the world. Like if ISIS formed a football team, I would cheer for them over the Hawkeyes. I I really would. That accusation isn't going to bother me. But if you call me a drug addict, well, that'll sting. Because I'm not a drug addict, but I used to be. See, what accusation does is it brings up a part of your past that's true, and it begins to pull you down. The reason an accusation tends to pull us down and holds us back from what God wants us to do is because there is an element of it that's true. And and I'm sure that there's somebody watching that you're wrestling. You're wrestling with what happened rather than celebrating what is currently happening in your life because you can't get past the affair or you can't get past the addiction or you can't get past the abortion, or you can't get past that thing that happened. And every time you seem to get a break, the enemy latches itself onto you and tries to pull you back through the power of accusation. And there are probably some people watching right now that you've never been able to get past your past. And what you did haunts you even to this day. Which leads us to point number four. Storms refocus our purpose. Storms often refocus our purpose. Back to a football reference. Uh, It's high school football season. And I love watching my son, Jaira, play football. Um, He gets to play some in varsity on Friday nights, and he plays on Mondays and and JV games. And so I get to watch him two games a a week. Man, it's it's pretty awesome. I don't have time to develop this story. Um, But the other day, um, I was was watching this game, and somebody went down. Somebody got hurt. And a dad in the stand starts yelling, get up, shake it off. Well, it wasn't me, by the way. Get up, shake it off, get back in the game. Now, his arm is like hanging off, man. Like, it's like, it's crazy. It really, probably wasn't quite like that. Um, but, but, but I was thinking about that. Like, seriously, I was thinking about that whole scenario in relation to our lives. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. I know you got hit. Well, get up. Shake it off. I know you don't feel like playing, but get up. Get back in the game, man. Get up. Just shake it off and get up. And the reason I want to say that is because right here in this text, like I love, I love Paul's response. Because while he's getting bit and everybody is standing around him and everybody's accusing him and everybody's tearing him down, it doesn't seem to bother Paul. Because look what he does in verse 5. But Paul shook the snake off into the fire. Paul just shook it off. Just shook it off. I could have been listening to Tay-Tay all day. Shake it off. Anyway, Paul shook it off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. Now, now, now watch how people's opinions change. Watch this. The people expected him to swell up or suddenly fall dead. But after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their mind and said he was a god. He's a murderer. He should have died. 
whoo, I think I'll worship this guy. Like, like, like that's what happened. And it happened because Paul shook it off. Now, how was Paul able to shake it off? It's very simple. Paul knew he had a calling on his life. Paul knew there was a divine assignment for him. Paul knew that God told him, hey, no matter what happens to you, you're going to preach the gospel in Rome. And so wherever Paul went, he was like, you know what? I'm not going to die in prison. I'm going to shake it off because God has bigger plans for me. You know what? I'm not going to die even though they're throwing rocks at me. I'm not going to die. I'm going to shake it off because God has bigger plans for me. You know what? I'm in the middle of a storm, but I can't die in this storm. And the reason I can't die in this storm is because there's a divine assignment on my life and God has bigger plans for me. And then when he gets bit by the snake, one of the deadliest snakes on the planet, Paul says, you know what? I got bitten, but I'm not going to become bitter and I'm not going to let it beat me down. I'm going to shake it off because at the end of the day, God's got bigger plans for my life. And listen, listen, don't miss this. Just like God had a plan for Paul's life, God has a plan for your life too. And today he's telling somebody, you need to shake it off. I know it hurts. I know it's a struggle. I know it's a pain. But by the authority given to you, by the power of Jesus Christ, today, today you can shake it off. I know you struggle. I know you struggle with accusation. I wrestle with it too. But I finally had to come to the conclusion that God is not in love with some future version of you, Ryan. God loves you right where you are. And that's the same for you. God is not in love with some future version version of you. He loves you just as you are right now. I don't care if you're a saint or a sinner. God loves both and everybody in between. I don't care if you've been bitten. I don't care how much you feel that you have fallen. God loves you right now. And I don't know how you feel about yourself. I don't know what the enemy told you this week, but let me tell you what God told me to tell you this week. That in Christ, every single person, every single person watching right now in Christ, forgiven. In Christ, you are forgiven. That means all sins, past, present, and future. You are forgiven in Christ. Every single person watching unconditionally loved in Christ. He didn't say, I love you if. He said, I love you, period. Every single person watching right now that is in Christ is accepted exactly as you are. He's not waiting on you to change. He took care of change on the cross. Every single person in this watching right now. Every single person, you are not forsaken. He has not left you in the storm. In fact, the only reason we make it through the storm is because he's with us in the storm the entire time. And you know that's true because as you look back over your life, you can see it. Every single person watching right now is covered by his grace. No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter what's happened to you, no matter how hard you have fallen, you are covered by the grace of God. Every single person we serve a God who is bigger than our past. And in Christ, all of us have the potential of an amazing future because in Christ, the best is always yet to come. So shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off today. Get up. I know you got hit, but get up. Shake it off. Get back in the game. I know the devil is telling you you ain't worth it. I know the devil is telling you you can't, but God is telling you you can. He's telling you today, get up. Yes, the storm sucks, but remember, he loves you in the middle of it. He's always with you, and he's got greater plans for you. Let's pray.